Hey guys, Alicia from Morning Hawk Creations here. Today's tutorial is going to be a reposting of a speed demo that's been posted on Facebook for quite some time. But I'm going to repost it as a tutorial. Um, now this tutorial is a 9 by 12 in charcoal of a little boy and a horse. Uh, this was a commission that I took back in 2012. Um, I never did post it as a tutorial as much as I did it as a speed demo with music. Uh, so we're reposting it as a tutorial. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is reference pictures. So this first reference picture is TJ, who is the boy subject, and the wrong horse. Lighting's real strong from one side, and he's got this kind of devious look on his face. The second picture has the right boy, the right horse, but the lighting in this picture is just horrendous. It's out of focus, and it's set way back from where the photographer took it. Again, right horse, right child. However, I can't even see TJ in the shot. So we take the first shot, we convert it to black and white, and then we're going to take the anatomy from the second shot with Sailor, and we're going to combine the two. Now, I don't like these pictures of Sailor because his coat doesn't shine real well. The lighting wasn't good for the horse. So we took this picture, converted to black and white, and we're going to combine them down to our actual shot. So this is the introduction that I gave the client. And we're going to get going. Now, I don't normally draw people. So to say that I could easily just walk you through my step-to-step -step, as sped up as this is, because this is eight times the speed that I was actually working, is going to be nearly impossible. So going in with... Uh, I believe it was the HB and lining in some of the details in the eyes. Again, TJ had his eyes really squinty and not very wide open and expressive. So it was hard to get a whole lot of detail. So I kind of had to uh, put in highlights where I felt that they were merited. Now, one of the things that you'll see me do when I'm rendering TJ's face is you won't see me using the pencil a whole lot. You'll see me use an awful lot with this blending stump and the tortillion. And the reason is, is I do not want to accidentally texture his face in such a way with uh, heavy strokes that do not get uh, erased or cannot be blended out. Um, so I'm just picking up the pigment from the charcoal pencils with the blending stumps and then laying in some tone as I'm going. And one of the things that makes me really uncomfortable uh, as I'm going through and I'm, I'm laying in the shadows and the highlights um, on TJ here is that without anything to compare it to, TJ's face now looks really, really dirty. It looks like TJ went rolling in a mud puddle and that's because there's nothing but blank white paper to compare it to and so while compared to the reference picture the highlights and shadows are correct when compared to everything else um, this just looks like a botched attempt at actually trying to render a, a human being but now once that I, I go in and we pull um, some more color and shadow down, you kind of understand how it brings uh, some 3D look to his face and then we kind of flesh his face out a little bit. And that'll happen within the last next couple of minutes. And again, very sparingly using the pencil actually on uh, TJ's face. You'll see me use it just to kind of define the edge of his nose, um, like the tip of his nose, um, his smile crease in his cheek, uh, and on his lips. But when it comes to uh, places like his forehead, uh, his forehead, this whole face area on the page was a little bit over two inches. So um, it would be very easy to overstep the bounds and... Uh, 
accidentally create a texture where I didn't want to. And now that we're giving him different tones, so we kind of started with kind of a middle tone and a highlight tone because it's really hard to take back some of this texture. So now it's safer to go in and give him some more shadow underneath his chin and uh, around his eyes and on the shadowy part of his uh, face where his face is as close to uh, Sailor's face. Now one of the reference pictures was really, really dark and one of them was a little bit uh, more light. So like I said, I did kind of go with a combination of the two uh, where we're letting him get really close into Sailor's face, um, but we're actually using the reference shot where he was with that uh, that paint, and he was not quite touching the horse's face because that got a little too dark. And putting some of the detail in on his ear. And really defining his jawline and his temple. And now we're going to kind of go in and give his hair some highlight and texture. And this is going to be the first of your contrasting tones right here. So you've got the smoothness of his skin, and then you've got the, the rough kind of shaggy texture of his hair. Now the way that we render this with a lot of highlights and contrast is going to help define the difference between his hair, which is probably about two, three inches long, and the horse's fur, which is right next to him, which is, well, it's it can be about as long, but it lays down in a completely different manner. So how we render these two different um, textures while still being very similar of nature is going to really define uh, the difference between the two animals. And yes, I just did refer to a, a six-year-old boy as an animal. So putting the shadow back at the back of his head so that we get the highlight around uh, the crown of his head. And then these little points where we've got deep shading crevices and deep shading shapes rather than it being an overall soft shape is how we're going to define the difference between a shaggy head of hair with the same hair length versus the smooth coat of the same hair length of an animal that's right next to him. So you get these really big jumps in contrast and the clumpiness uh, where there's like on his, on the one part of his head right here, we're uh, defining the highlights and giving him little clumps where his hair kind of bunches up and there's bunches of highlights. We'll use the same technique when rendering Sailor's mane and his forelock. But wondering when rendering human hair, this becomes a real uh, key point. You want to make sure you don't have a whole lot of strokes and contrast in the smoothness and the texture of the skin and reserve that for texture in hair. And notice how the more we give it highlights and the more minute, really pointed shadows that we're giving, the more that brings the rise in his face or in his hair up and the shadows in his hair down. It gives his hair more shine. So now it sounds like I'm jumping around, but I'm really not. The two focal points in this piece have to be the horse and um, the little boy. And I want the, I want the focus to be the expression and the, the, I really want their personalities to come through. So yes, I went right from the little boy and his expression right into the horse's expression. And the reason is, is the horse is such an overwhelming, huge piece. 
in this overall layout that it can easily overwhelm this little boy. Comparatively in size, the horse is probably nine times bigger than the size of this little boy's face. And so I want to make sure that uh, when we're rendering this, uh, we're retaining two things. And one is the perspective in size between uh, this little six-year-old boy and this 1,200-pound horse, but that at the same time, um, we're not losing the importance of the two figures. So one of the things that I want to point out as long as we're kind of working on going from the eye into the side of the cheek and all that is I'm not leaving it as just very flat surfaces. I'm continuing to go in with a lot of detail uh, to really bring out the different levels and textures of the anatomy and the curves and dips in the face. I'm focusing on making sure that the strokes that I put in accent um, the texture of the fur. And the color of the fur, even though this is black and white. So at the point where this horse's face actually is laying on, or TJ and Sailor are touching, um, it's easy to go true to life and to make TJ's face really, really dark because it's in a lot of shadow. Now, if, it, if, I, if I lit it and rendered it true to life, his face would be really, really dark and it would be really, really hard to see. And what I really don't want to do is I don't want to go overly dark. I really like um, how light it is when he was standing next to that paint. Um, and when he actually got real close with Sailor in a lot of those shots, uh, his face was either off to the side with the light or behind the light and backlit. So we couldn't get that devious little glint that little boys have when they're up to no good. And one of the other things that I want to make sure that I point out is that we did adjust not just the lighting on TJ, we did adjust the lighting on Sailor too. And that was because I don't want um, his face to be overly heavy and overly shadowed. And this is something that as an artist you have to kind of learn uh, with different lightings and proportions, how to uh, adjust if you need to change the lighting. This piece took me about 20 hours to do <clears throat> for a 9 by 12 that is an awful lot of time. However, the focus was very much on the photorealism of the piece and making sure that I was 
really focused on balancing the composition and not making uh, certain elements overly heavy. So in the reference picture, Sailor is actually looking in the other direction. And so what I did is to uh, focus on swinging his uh, anatomy around so he was looking from the other direction. And then I kept the lighting. I, I did adjust it so it wasn't quite so dark. Uh, on the end of the page, but I did like the fact that it gave it an end and then your eye stopped wandering off the page. I really wanted your eye to land um, between the eye of the horse and the face of the child. And up here into his forelock, the farther away that we get from um, Sailor's eyes and TJ's face, the less detail I'm going to get, the less focused on detail. And that's simply for the fact that I don't want your eye completely distracted by how much detail we're putting in over here. And these little rises and dips in Sailor's face really added to the shininess of his coat, make him come across as a very clean horse, even when I, shot, I chose to reshoot his um, profile out in the pasture. Uh, shooting horses of a brown or sorrel color uh, if you shoot those horses in really bright sunshine, um, you're going to find that the uh, level of uh, contrast is going to be much better for you when you have to re-render them in black and white. And again, one of the things that I want to note is that with horse ears, it's very easily to just put a blanket color on and just say that oh, well, the inside of the horse's ears are, are black and let it, leave it at that. Um, in the reference picture that was provided by the client, um, it was so dark that really truly Sailor's ears did look black. None of the anatomy issues, none of the a fine veins that are running through a horse's ears. None of the highlights really came through when they looked very flat. Spending time, spending that extra effort on bringing those small uh, deviations um, and anatomical issues uh, into your pictures are going to help bring the realism that much more forward. And as silly as it is, yeah, I did spend a little bit of time messing with Sailor's forelock, giving him these kind of scriggly hairs that were kind of coming up. 
when I shot him in the uh, in the paddock, uh, it was a little bit breezy, and so I, I did kind of want to retain the uh, realism of those few stray hairs that were just kind of not behaving. Sometimes those less than perfect issues, um, whether it's a, a couple strands of hair that aren't quite laying right or um, the hairs that are out of place, can actually add to it rather than detracting it. So if you look at the reference picture, if you go back to the beginning and you look at the reference picture, there isn't quite as much contrast in the forelock that there is when I, I render it, and that's because I really want um, the forelock here to reflect kind of the high contrast that I did when I rendered TJ's hair. And it helps it give it some pop, it gives it some depth, and it makes the motion that it's inflecting uh, really draw your eye back and forth. So as much as your eye may wander from TJ's face to Sailor's face, your eye will naturally go up to this really high contrasting forelock, which will lead you back down into TJ's face and back around in that circle. Again, the finer points of, of doing ears like this is making sure that you're giving them, you know, depth and curvature and showing the finer parts of the anatomy, the little hairs that are around the edges and the veins that run along the insides. It's all these little things that help bring that much more realism to your portraits. I'm going in with an X-Acto knife and kind of scraping off the fine top layer in order to really emphasize these few stray hairs that are going across the ears. One of the nice things about being able to do that is that now not only does it re-emphasize your eye wanting to go back toward the left hand side of the picture, but it gives the horse a sense of weight because you can obviously see the, the minor breeze that's blowing and yet because TJ is so close to Sailor's face, TJ's hair is not blowing because Sailor's face is in the way. So it kind of re-emphasizes the weight. That the, and the size that this horse has. going back and forth and just really making sure we got a lot of highlight and contrast. Um, it's just kind of like those briar horses that you can buy in the store. All those minor little twists in the mane uh, don't give it too much detail, they give it just enough.
So now the judgment call had to be come here about how dark we were going to make the space between um, Sailor and TJ because we want to make sure that we're putting distance in the neck without making the overall area too dark and losing Sailor's eye in this big massive neck. So now we're kind of moving into the muzzle because we want to make sure that we properly balance this really gorgeous face with a really apropos muzzle. And again, making sure that all of the shadow and highlights and all the lines that I'm using go in line with the curvature of the fur. I actually need to make sure I'm emphasizing those minute little things um, with curved lines rather than straight lines, and they have to be of various different lengths and randomly kind of scattered. Even if it's within that same eighth inch, I need to make sure that um, I'm not just making a straight line of all the exact same length um, because that's not how uh, reality works. This real heavy shadow on Sailor's jaw. Rather than taking your eye away from it, adds tone of finality to it because we're not giving this portrait a backdrop. Your eye kind of ends there and doesn't wander off the page. There's a lot of double circles that happen in this composition which kind of keep your eye on the page. So while you have the focus of um, TJ's face, and originally when we started this, it looked very dark and it looked very dirty. Um, once you compare it to the dark tones and the shadows that we have to put in for Sailor's face, uh, then you see how TJ's face looks much brighter. It looks more friendly. Um, it doesn't look nearly as bad as when we started. So the big lesson right there is uh, your shadows and highlights are only as good as the content and the contrast and the tone of what is around them. So I do apologize for the lighting. I changed venues and actually started working on this over by my parents' house, and they don't use daylight bulbs, so I still wanted to record this. Unfortunately, I did not have daylight bulbs. So Sailor has a stripe that goes all the way down his face. It's actually a blaze. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure I kind of did is um, in one of the pictures that I have, um, TJ was actually giving Sailor an apple. And actually, Sailor had already ate the apple, but um, he was still kind of um, playing with TJ's hand as they were sitting posing for the picture. And because this is actually the, the actual shot, the actual body shot, and the actual two reference shots, these guys were actually not anywhere near each other at the time. They were shot in completely different settings. I wanted to make sure that we still carried that interaction in the portrait so that 
small thing of him kind of, cr you know, crinkling up his nose is still important. And still going in, making small little adjustments to TJ's face. And then back in with this. And much like um, TJ's face, we're not going to go in with a lot of harsh lines to define the fur on the end of Sailor's nose. And that's because the, the fur on the end of a horse's nose, outside from its lip, is really soft and very velvety so I want it to kind of mirror the softness of TJ's face. So I managed to get through all of Sailor's nose and his muzzle right here. And it had begun to work on TJ's hand when I realized that I did not necessarily like the position that TJ's hand was in. So I started it and then I changed it and I started it and then I decided that I really, I really didn't like it. And so there's a jump in this video where TJ's hand is not done and then all of a sudden it is done and I don't go into it because I literally went from uh, doing it the way the line drawing was to completely changing it. So all this wrinkling and contrast and um, the highlights and the shadows here kind of put a nice end to Sailor's face. Nice, interesting kind of way of putting proportion to how big this horse is versus how small this child is. And the lack of harsh strokes help to convey the softness of this horse's face. Which is important to the storytelling. So here I am, and I'm just going to start to lay in some general highlights and shadows for TJ's shirt. 
<clears throat> start up his his hand right there but again the more I looked at the way his hand was uh, laid across Sailor's face the more it just really didn't look like it was gonna work right It does happen where you know you're working on something and it, it doesn't work right. Um, it doesn't work the way you want it to. The anatomy doesn't look the right way, and uh, that's usually about the point where I say, okay, I'm just going to take a break from it. I'll go work on another part of the drawing, and I'll come back and I'll try it again. And here I'm taking out the tip of his finger because it just it really didn't look right. The more I fiddle with it, the more I hate it. And take a page from my book. Just go, nope. Just going to walk away from it because I'm probably overthinking it. Put the shadow in for Sailor's Neck. Some of the definition for some of those bunching muscles and some more detail for his mane. Some small shadow that brings down the neck in behind TJ. And again, not putting a whole lot of detail in here. Now we're just going to kind of let this fade into kind of obscurity, kind of impression. Little bit of shadow pushes Sailor's neck back behind. You'll notice here that TJ's shirt's all done, and it's because I forgot to record. But you'll notice how I changed how hand was around the muzzle. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed the uh, new version of this tutorial. Um, and here are the music credits that went with this original production. Um, now, when I do these speed demos and speed tutorials that I give to my clients, I obviously don't charge for them because not only can I post them on YouTube as speed tutorials, but um, because I'm posting copyright music with them, I obviously can't sell them outright so just another lesson in copyright law and at the end of this after we get through the credits for the music that was put through this you're going to get another shot of the reference pictures there's their facial shot and here's our reshoot of our headshot for Sailor and in black and white. Here we come with the finished piece.
Hope you learned a lot from this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your questions below. Thanks for watching.